Hey everybody, it's Meredith Miller with your Monday Sana q and A's. I'm gonna answer another question right now and I'm gonna answer some of these in Spanish too. So you'll be seeing those in the news feed. There are some people um, on my channel right now whose primary language is Spanish. So I wanna do some videos answering some questions in Spanish too. And I have a lot of questions on my list this week. They're really adding up. I'm not gonna get to them all. I'm gonna keep them on my list and I'm gonna go through them week after week. If you would like to have a much quicker response, keep in mind I do offer that service on my website, innerintegration.com. You'll see personal email support. It's $57 within 48 hours. You will have a very comprehensive response in your inbox from me personally about your question, whatever your question is about your experience with narcissistic abuse. I'll give you some feedback about your questions. I'm gonna give you some empowering questions to ask yourself and to journal about. I'll give you some other resources to go check out, maybe some books or some YouTube videos and whatnot. And that'll really give you, you know, a takeoff point um, for whatever that is that you're working on in your life. If you want much more in-depth help, you wanna book a strategy session with me that's 90 minutes on Skype. You can be anywhere in the world and I'll help you get to the heart of what it is. Like, what is it that's blocking you? What are you still trying to understand? What are you trying to resolve from the past experiences? And how can you start taking steps forward toward your happiness, your sanity, your health, and your well-being? So you can book those session by session. Sometimes I can get you in the same week, depending on my schedule, but usually definitely by the next week I can get you into my schedule. If you want to book a package of sessions, you can get them in three or five packs and you can save yourself money and do more in-depth work with me those have no expiration date so you can have you know a session here a session there however you want to use them and you can book them anytime you're ready so this question is hey Meredith is there a way to test someone if they are a psychopathic or a narcissist would you maybe consider making this a theme in sauna if you have some thoughts thanks a lot for existing and spreading awareness so yeah, um, these are called the red flags, right? The red flags of psychopathy, the red flags of narcissism. Um, Dana, who is the leader of the Narcissist Support Group, she also has a YouTube channel, I think it's called Thrive After Abuse Now. She did a great series of like, I don't know, 40 or 50 red flags, very similar to the ones on the Psychopath Free website. I recommend checking out those two resources if you want like a whole list of all the red flags because like there's a lot of them to go through, right? So check those out, check out Dana's videos, check out the Psychopath Free website where they have the red flags of the psychopath, the red flags of the narcissist. Um, what are like the most important ones from there that I would look out for? Say, you know, I'm not sure if you're talking about like you're out in the dating world or you just ended this relationship and now, you know, you're moving forward and you just wanna make sure the people you're allowing in your life are not one of these people. It sounded like it's more that than you questioning a relationship in your life. So let's imagine that it's that. You wanna test this person to see if they have empathy, okay? Because the psychopath, the narcissist, the sociopath, the borderline, their conscience doesn't work like ours. They have the ability to manipulate and abuse people and not feel the weight of the guilt. They don't feel that remorse. They don't feel the guilt of doing something wrong. Their conscience doesn't work like that. And what is amazing is that the conscience is directly connected to our ability to form emotional attachments with other people, which is also why these manipulators cannot form the normal human attachments that we have with other people. They don't feel that. They don't feel the depth of that emotional connection like other people do, which is why it's easy for them to treat people like objects, right? To use people to reach their goals and their means, to discard people like a piece of trash when they're done with them. So looking for that empathy, you know, looking for the empathy from the person. Now, this can be a little tricky, especially if this person is claiming to be very spiritual. What you'll find like in the new age, you know, communities and probably the religious communities as well. I don't have as much experience in religious communities, though I do have a lot of clients who tell me that their narcissist or psychopath or sociopath was in fact a minister 
or reverend or some other leader in a religious organization. The same sort of thing happens in the spiritual communities. So the new age brand of narcissist or the new age brand of psychopath or sociopath comes across as very interested in you and telling you how spiritual you are and intuitively sensing and connecting a lot of who you are, right? And your pain and your vulnerability. And they're very good at feeling that out. The narcissist is quite intuitive at sniffing out your vulnerabilities. The psychopath is just uncanny the way they go right for those vulnerabilities every time. You know, it's it's like it's like that is their like their superhero talent is to go right for people's vulnerabilities. So it's complicated when this person is masquerading as an empathic person. You want to be very cautious and notice is the feeling there, right? Or is it all hype? Right? Is it hype and projected fabrication of intensity? Or is the feeling actually there? Does this person actually care about you? How do you tell? Well, when you respond and you start to talk about, like they say something, 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 and, and then you start to talk about whatever that is, your wound or something, right? Is the person listening with empathy and like, wow, like, are, can they feel it? Did they feel your pain when you're talking about that? Are they going, wow, I'm so sorry you went through that. That must have been horrible. You know, uh, something of that nature. Or are they much more interested in being the hero or are they much more interested in the drama of the situation rather than your well-being? Right? So if you tell them about some situation where you're being abused or you were being abused, are, do they seem like they're really concerned and interested? But actually when you feel deeper into that, you recognize they're only interested in the drama of it. They're getting a thrill from that. But they're not actually connected to the emotional feeling that you have about that. Because the empathy is a person's ability to feel another person, to feel what the other person feels right? To truly feel it and recognize it, putting themselves in that other person's point of view, right? Are they able to do that or are they not, right? And this can be really tricky, like I said, especially with this new age brand of narcissists and psychopaths and sociopaths. So you want to be very, very cautious with that, you know, and is this person dismissive? you know, of what you're saying. Like, do they not really pay attention? Are they not really caring? Or are they just like, yeah, that's awesome. And now moving on to me. Or and now moving on to whatever, you know. Or are they just like feeding into the drama of things, you know, versus like actually caring about you. And that's something that you're not gonna be able to recognize with your mind. What I find is that something you have to feel out right? It, it's, it's coming from somewhere like what I would call the discernment. And I did a video on discernment versus judgment. And that discernment is like a feeling you get. It comes from your intuition. And maybe it's like this icky feeling that you get. Or maybe it's this feeling that, gosh, it really seemed like he or she cared or was concerned. But actually, didn't feel like they were and I can't really explain that but it just felt off that's your sign okay that is the biggest red flag of dealing with the manipulator is that feeling you get that things are just off something feels off something feels icky something feels not so good something feels like you have to force yourself to get involved with that to some degree, something that feels like you're going above and beyond what you should be doing to maintain that connection. You know, when you're getting that weird feeling that something's just not right and you can't explain it and maybe you have no rational reason to justify why, but you just have the feeling that feeling is enough. 
that feeling a hundred percent you have to listen to that you have to start trusting your feelings more okay that's how you got into the mess is that instead of trusting yourself you second guessed yourself you self doubted your own feelings and perceptions of reality and you allowed the other person to manipulate your reality through gaslighting through rationalization through minimization through guilt tripping through blame shifting through diversion right they have all kinds of covert aggressive manipulation tactics and if you want to know about those i recommend reading in sheep's clothing by dr george simon he really lays out each of those covert aggressive manipulation tactics that you really want to know how to recognize right it's really important because man they just until you see that you don't recognize that that was actually a form of abuse that was a form of manipulation you know and then you see it in this book and it's so clear it just becomes so sterile and clinical and so clear you know and you're out of the fog where you were caught in before but a hundred percent of the time your feeling will tell you right and if you tell yourself well well but i didn't feel it and i didn't but you did if you're really honest with yourself and you look back your feeling knew what probably happened was that you let your mind confuse you you let your mind believe in the illusion you let your mind rationalize you let your mind create excuses you let your mind believe in whatever this person was saying and you compromised your own intuitive feeling right so now moving forward you want to rebuild that sense of self-trust by listening to your feeling listening to your feeling every time even when you have no rational proof why you have to listen to that feeling and the thing is when you start listening to that feeling more and you meet new people and you're like mm -mm, this doesn't feel right and you listen to that and you cut it off sure you might go could I have been wrong though? Like, could that person maybe not have been manipulative? That's a possibility that you'll ask yourself that question. But actually, if you recognize it, you're gonna recognize that there's this feeling that keeps happening and your body communicates to you that feeling in a particular way. It's like a message to you. And your body, everybody's body is somewhat different. There are commonalities, right? You might find, if you're a woman, you might find you just close down. Like everything just closes down and shuts down when you're in that situation. That might be your intuitive sign. And yeah, it might be that you never get real proof of what was going on, but you know that you listened to that feeling and you acted on that. You took action to set the boundary, to listen to your feeling and not second guess yourself for someone else you know the only other alternative is to stay in and to keep going until you get to that point where you have the hardcore proof that, that person is manipulating you and by that point you're hurt by that point you're more abused by that point you have faced more harm and it's just more dangerous you know it's much better to listen to that feeling and to act on that feeling every time so your empathy is like essentially how you pre-qualified for that relationship, right? The psychopath, the sociopath, the narcissist, the borderline, they seek out someone with empathy. They seek out someone with a high degree of conscientiousness because if your conscience works really strongly, you are gonna have empathy for other people. You are gonna feel for other people. You are gonna second guess yourself and believe in other people, right? They targeted you because of that. But at the same time, you can use that sense of empathy to heal yourself and move forward. That sense of empathy is also connected to your intuition, which is connected to your knowing, right? So turn that back inside. Instead of facing it always outside, and always giving the other person, you know, the benefit of the doubt and second guessing yourself or what they're saying and turn that inward and have empathy for yourself, right? You got to have empathy for yourself. How many codependents out there? We're just like, we just kept giving all this empathy to other people, but there was no empathy for ourselves. Like, where was that? We weren't taking care of ourselves. Right? We weren't having empathy for how we felt because we were trained usually earlier in life to doubt our feelings, to doubt our perceptions of reality or that we didn't even have a right to have those because we had to take care of someone else, mommy or daddy, you know, who was going to abuse and manipulate us into doing that. So if that was your pattern, recognize that was a lifetime pattern that you probably learned. 
And now it's time to take care of yourself and start with having empathy for yourself first and recognize those feelings. If you get a feeling that something doesn't feel right or you get asked out on a date or you meet a new friend and they ask you to go hang out and all of a sudden like your energy just drops, like you just suddenly feel deflated or you suddenly feel icky or you suddenly feel like you don't even want to go out there, don't do it. Listen to yourself, listen to your empathy for yourself, listen to your intuition and start to rebuild your sense of self-trust, right? That's gonna help you recognize other people. The more aware you are of yourself and how your feeling communicates to you, how your intuition communicates with you, how your body communicates with you, the more easily you're gonna recognize that other person. You know, there there are a lot of sociopaths, narcissists and, and psychopaths borderlines too, who are who are very easily noticeable from the get-go you know whether you're in online dating and you got a message from them or you met a person in person and like in the first five minutes you got the message or you know something of this nature where it happened right away sometimes it happens really easily that you can see that because it's just so obvious those are the more overt types right the more covert types are the more sophisticated kind. They're harder. They're harder to see. What I'm noticing now is when dating these types, the really covert, really sophisticated types, it takes about one month. One month is about the limit. And then the true colors start to show, right? They can maintain the facade and the charade for several weeks, you know? And so I would take things real slow and real easily. You know, it's like a probation period to see if that person really does deserve to be a priority in your life. And over the period of that month, you will figure it out if you're listening to your intuition, if you're paying attention to yourself, if you're really being present with yourself and noticing how you feel when that person is with you or when you're on the phone or texting or thinking about that person, notice how you're feeling. Okay, that is gonna tell you 100% of the time the reality. As long as you don't get lost in your mind and start going down that path of rationalization and blah, blah, blah. Because that's where you know, your mind can make up a thousand different illusions, right? But your body always tells you the truth. So you wanna listen to that. And what you'll notice is that during that month, if you are really present and you are really aware, you will see the signs even of that sophisticated covert type. They do reveal themselves. If I look back, 100% of the time, that covert aggressive person made it very clear in that first month. There was always something, and it's usually something around your boundaries. They don't like when you have boundaries. You know, when you first start to meet somebody, sometimes you're overly pleasing, you know, you're overly accommodating, and then it starts to feel uncomfortable. So then you're like, okay, well, I'll set this boundary. And then you set the boundary and they get a little bit upset. And then you keep setting a boundary and they get more upset. And then you start to see their true colors come out, right? So that's another really big test of the toxic person is to set boundaries, right? set boundaries because if you have boundaries that will protect yourself from toxicity getting in that will protect you from expending all of your energy attention focus and awareness on toxic people who don't deserve that energy attention focus and awareness and your boundaries will make a very clear line protecting what matters to you and what you value and it sends a message to that person and if you enforce those boundaries and that person doesn't like that because they can't get what they want from you because of that boundary they're going to make it really clear because the overt type is going to be overtly aggressive it's going to be very clear that they're imposing on your boundary to get what they want they're just going to mow over that boundary and aggressively seek what it is they're trying to get the more covert and sophisticated they are at hiding their manipulation the more tricky it gets it starts to look more like guilt tripping it starts to look more like shaming it starts to look more like it's all your fault but it's not you're selfish for having that boundary you're so selfish for not giving them what they want it starts to look more like that recognize that's a form of manipulation as well that's also a toxic person and maintain your boundaries because your boundaries will keep toxic people away right so if you get discarded or the toxic person suddenly drops you and they're gone count that as a blessing 
because that person recognized your boundaries. It means you did something right. You set the boundary. They didn't like your boundary. They couldn't get what they wanted. They moved on to someone else. They might test you again to see if you're now willing to compromise your boundary. Now that they've taken away, you know, their presence for, you know, like through a form of punishment and they try to come back and see if you miss them and blah, blah, blah. And don't accept that. At that point, you want to go no contact as soon as, as someone ghosts. They disappear, they discard you, you want to just go no contact entirely and understand that that means you did something right. That means you set a boundary, you didn't let them take advantage of you, you didn't let them manipulate you into breaking that boundary for them and that's why they disappeared. So if you're unsure about a person in your life, set a new boundary because probably you're unsure because something feels icky, you know, you're compromising yourself in some way with them, right? So when you set that boundary, it's going to become very clear who's toxic and who is not. And, and that'll reveal things real quickly. So empathy and boundaries. And if you want a more comprehensive list of all those signs, again, check out Dana's videos on Thrive After Abuse. Check out Psychopath Free website on the red flags of narcissists, psychopaths, and sociopaths. And educate yourself because the more you know, the better. And the thing is like, you don't want to be so caught up in your mind and thinking about all this stuff that you miss the most obvious thing in front of you, right? Because that could happen. You could be looking so hard for these things, but what's appearing is in a different form. You know, because that, that manipulative energy can take all sorts of forms. It can appear really attractive. It can appear really disgusting. It can appear really seductive. It can appear really pulling in, like I'm the victim, help me, heal me sort of thing. It can come across in all sorts of different ways. So it can, can be difficult to recognize. And, and the thing is that more than anything, the telltale thing is your feeling you're feeling if you don't feel good something's not right something's not right and you want to get really honest with yourself about what that is so i know it's it's really difficult when you're meeting new people or you're putting yourself out there to meet new people you're afraid you're afraid of who you're going to be meeting and are you going to recognize it and are you going to get conned again so the more you focus on the feeling and being connected to your intuition the better that is your number one sign, your number one way of recognizing who is toxic and who is not, on who it feels good to be around and who it does not. So listen to that and you're gonna rebuild your sense of self-trust. That is one of the biggest wounds after abuse, you know, the deception, the betrayal that takes place and the self-doubt, right? The destroyed sense of self-trust. You've lost trust in yourself, you've lost trust in other people, and you've usually lost trust in the universe and in God, because how could that happen to you, right? Like how, how can a God who loves you allow that to happen? How could a universe that supports your existence allow that to happen, right? You, you can go through this. That's part of the PTSD crash, is that self-doubt and the destroyed sense of self-trust. And the antidote to that and how to rebuild that is to listen to your intuition, to act on it, and to protect yourself with those boundaries. I'm sending you a big hug.